and my cup run it over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I pray the 23rd song is entirely blessing bring comfort to this family. Yes, Praise the Lord, everybody. Our New Testament reading will be coming from, again, a very well-known passage. John 14, beginning at the first verse. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thy voice, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If he had known me, he should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. John 14, 1 through 7. Word of God for the people of God. God bless you, man. Let us pray. Well, a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Almighty and all wise God, our Father, we come, Lord, first of all, to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to gather even at a time like this. Realizing, God, you're a good God, even on what we consider a bad day. For, Lord, we realize that if it had not been for you on our side, we wouldn't be where we are right now. As we come to thank you for the life and the legacy of Brother James Kimmel Howard, we ask you right now, God, that the sacred numbers will become treasures in the hearts of the loved ones. And that we continue to journey on this journey, Lord. We realize her past no sorrows that heaven cannot heal. So I pray now, Lord. I pray that you will strengthen the family of God. Realize that eyes are red from crying, brown, and tears. But the word declared we could endure for a night. But joy shall come in the morning. If I would be remiss, God, if I didn't say this is a long night for this family, realizing, oh God, it seemed like a, a double whammy. But Lord, we know that nothing takes you by surprise. And realizing, Lord, that even in a time like this, there shall be glory after this. But Lord, your promises are true. And the preacher already alluded to you are our shepherd, and we shall not want. Lead us down the path of righteousness for your name. Say, God, we ask you now to have your way, Lord. As the pastor even said, we realize, God, that you've given us praise, O oh Lord, that we can praise our way through this situation. God, I pray now for the man that's going to declare the word of God. Bless Dr. Peppers right now with a rainbow word. A word that will comfort power down here, Lord. A word that will lift up broken hearts. A word from heaven, O oh God. But in times like these, Lord, we need a word. We need a word that's going to carry us through. We need a word, Lord. So have your way, God. Have your way in this house, Lord. And then, Lord, we just say thank you. Call you a prayer answering God. And, Lord, this is your servant's prayer. In the only name that matters. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And the redeemer of the Lord. Say amen. 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 Yeah, we thank God for the male course on that. 
and party selection to Kevin Underwood and Elvin Hill from the scriptures and to Pastor Morgan for that prayer. Amen. We know that uh, we're going to make it. Is that right? Amen. The only way we can make it is through the word of God in prayer. If you keep the word on your mouth and keep a prayer in your heart, you will make it out of mind. Every time the house assistants come in with a special selection, Father Bush, Dr. Virginia Melvin will come with acknowledgments and we'll come back with instructions for the reflections. Can we say praise the Lord?
Jesus. He's a mighty good God. Oh yeah, we're here to celebrate today. A mighty. My Uncle James ever have a God, I think. I stand before you today to do the acknowledgement. I would like to say there were numerous, there were so many cars. And the family, we feel your love. Unfortunately, I cannot read them all because we will be here all day. So I will call your name for the ones that I have received. And I'm just going to read just a few little cards, okay? First, Union Road Church of Christ, Disciples of Christ Resolution of Respect for James Edward Howard. Whereas in the providence of God, he has brought to close the life of James Edward Howard on April the 5th, 2024. We, the pastor, elect lady, elders, leadership boards, mothers, administration staff, and members of Union Grove Church of Christ, disciples of Christ in Clinton, North Carolina, feel that it is beneficial to express our sympathy to the family. We commend you to him who know it best and will always do right. You and your family have our most sincere thoughts and prayers. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be presented to the family and a copy kept in the church archives. To the family, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great. But we want you to know that we share in your sorrow. But more importantly, we recognize that this earthly loss is heaven's gain. Hallelujah. Humbly submitted on this 13th day of April, 2024, the pastor, officers, and members of Union Grove Church of Christ, Disciples of Christ, Clinton, North Carolina, stand at ease. Stand at ease, soldier. Rest your weary soul. You served your country. You walked your last patrol. Stand at ease, soldier. Rest. It's your time to just be you. You've been and done all you can. You've been there to see us through. Stand at ease, soldier. You're no longer part of this parade. We salute you and say farewell on this, your last parade. Elder Prevalon M. Richardson, Senior Pastor, Sister Tashana Williams, Church Administrator. Lisbon Street Missionary Baptist Church of Clinton, North Carolina, to the family of the late Mr. James E. Howard, on behalf of Pastor Thaddeus L. Godwin, Sr., and the congregation at Lisbon Street Missionary Baptist Church, we would like to express our most sincere sadness at the passing of your loved one, Brother James E. Howard. In this time of great sorrow, please know that you are in our thoughts and our prayers. While it hurts us left behind, we hope you can take comfort in the fact that your loved one is with God now. He lives on not only in our memories, but with our Heavenly Father as well. If there is anything you need during this difficult time, Please do not hesitate to reach out to the church family for support. We are here for you emotionally, spiritually, and physically. Yours in Christ, Reverend Thaddeus L. Godwin, Senior Pastor, and First Lady Elois G. Godwin, Lisbon Street Missionary Baptist Church, family of Clinton, North Carolina. Poplar Grove Missionary Baptist Church. This is a letter of sympathy to the family of Mr. James Edward Howard, from Pastor Willie C. Alfred, First Lady Reverend Jackie Alfred, Associate Ministers, Office Members of Papa Grove Missionary Baptist Church of Faith in North Carolina. We are truly sad to hear about the 
passing on your brother Howard. We share with you in your loss and know that you are not alone. The Almighty is standing right by your side in very, this very moment, and he will never leave you nor forsake you. We send our deepest sympathy and our thoughts and prayers are with you. We pray that his love, his mercy, his grace, his peace, and his joy be with you today and always. The Almighty is very present help in the time of trouble. We will continue to keep you in our thoughts and our prayers, his blessings upon each of you, prayerfully yours, Reverend Willie Alfred Pastor. This is from Andrew Chapel Missionary Baptist Church with our deepest sympathy. This is from the Veterans Breakfast Group Club. Uh, God is our strength. There are prize for the Butler Jr., Robert <coughs> Brown, Lawrence Warren, Bernard Spates, Betty Scotland, Don McKellar, Sheldon McKellar, Jerome Warren, and Larry Bailey. This praying for comfort in your law strength when the days are long and God's faithful love to bring peace to your heart with sympathy. This is from the American Legion Auxiliary Unit 319. I will just go down this list. I'm not going to read any more cards, but I will acknowledge the people who sent them. If I did not receive your card in advance, I apologize, but we do have them. Ms. Tupreme Williams and family, who is the granddaughter of James Edward Howard, Ms. Brenda Faison, Ms. Christian Matthews and family, Ms. Darcy Ann Hicks and family, Ms. Evan Petit and family, Ms. and Mrs. Johnny and Jerry Morgan, Mr. Lee Byron, Ms. Lily Sutton and her grandson Buddy, Ms. Peggy Barkin and family, Ms. Tamika Robinson, Ms. Bernice Bryant Young, Henry J. Fowler, American Legion Post 319's Center of Deepest, Deepest Sympathy. And they signed off Ann, Andrea, Robert L. B., Daryl Price, B.L. Jones, Post 22, Willie Mitchell, David Underwood, Alvin Heron, Marshall T., William Deva, R.M. Oaks, and Jerome Warren, Ms. Ernest T. Jackson, Mr. and Mrs. Larry Jackson, Ms. Irene and Ms. Grace, Ms. Alice Kirby, Cousin Samuel Howard and family, and Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Butler. Last but not least, I was asked to do a poem for my uncle today, and it reads, A Link in the Family Chain. A link in the family chain is missing, but the chain was never broken. Life has just ended its race because our Heavenly Father has spoken. On April 5th, 2024, James Edward Howard heard Jehovah's voice. So he released his spirit to him, and now the angels rejoice. He is the first link of the nine siblings' chain to receive his wings. There is no more suffering or pain, so let freedom reign. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's great news, just in case you haven't heard. To all the other family links who remain in the chain, one day soon, Jehovah God is going to call our name. This only means another link will be moved from the chain, but the family chain left behind is still connected and remains. If you don't know Jesus ah, in the pardon of your sins, asking him for forgiveness is where it all begins. Do it before your link. Mm gets removed from the family chain. So in paradise, we can link back up and be all together again. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Melvin, for the acknowledgement that has been sent that you Read to us family on behalf of Mina Grove again. We extend our hearts of our 
heart felt sympathy, and whatever we can do, um, we got to get for you, and we'll do everything we can to assist in these times. Amen. I declare, you know, God knows what He's doing. God knows what He's doing. In times like these, we just gotta learn how to trust God, Amen. even when we don't understand God. I preached a, I preached a sermon a while back. Uh, when God don't make sense, sometimes his decisions don't make sense to us. We can't pick it up. But if we trust in what he said, yes, if we trust in who he is, we know that on the other side of it, everything will be all right. Amen. This time we'll have reflections. Um, family have requested that you would keep it two minutes. Two minutes. Amen. Amen. Two minutes. And so um, they've already outlined who um, they would love to hear from today. On behalf of the church, the chairman, Deacon, Deacon Willie Melvin is coming. On behalf of the family, the Reverend Darlene Edwards is coming. And following on behalf of the American Legion Post 319, Commander Ed Edgar J. Warren is coming in that order. Amen. I'd like to say uh, on the behalf of my family, uh, Dane Lewis, he was a man of faith. He exercised that faith. And every chance he got, he told about that faith. If we haven't heard his testimony, but I'm pretty sure if he was in the family, we have heard it. Because he gave it. And he gave that testimony for a reason. That we might all have something to learn and, and go by. Uh, so if we just follow in his footsteps, I think that the family name will go a long way. Uh, we don't want to do nothing to uh, embarrass the family name. Uh, name Hill, he was a, a type of person that uh, he, I want to say, he relished the family name. He was always willing to give his testimony. Uh, I, I don't know how many years ago it was, but he came about how when he had a, a stool and the doctor told him he would never walk again. And he said he couldn't accept it. His mother prayed for him, <coughs> friends prayed for him, and he believed and he had confidence that God would let him walk again. Mm -hmm. And he did. I know uh, many times in the we would be uh, talking about something else, but he would always find a way to get the testimony to the people. We would learn something from it. And one thing, God, he just, I'd like to say uh, that it gives my heart very big to hear about uh, just to hear my cousins. Thank you. Just a good. You still got it. You still got it. I've always been a favorite of mine to hear this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and through the how of the end, if you live long enough, you got two things you can look forward to. Either your head and turn gray, or you're going to get thin up there. <laughs> <laughs> Just a uh, part of the house tree. And the women also have some beautiful bread. We just run in my family. And it's something we've got to look forward to. And just look at the house family because the jeans run deep. So he's going to look at them. And just looking at them, you know, he's going to know it. And we are related. So, uh, to the family, uh, pray for one another. And try to help one another out. Thank you.
Yeah, the other one said, How can I sing a song of Zion in a strange land? And I say the same. However, the answer is, is because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah, yeah. And my strength mm -hmm. is the joy of the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 And to God be the glory. The minute and hour. Now and forever. Yeah. God is good and God is love. We thank him for his presence and the gifts that he brings unto us all. Amen. Amen. In Jeremiah 29 and 11, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you. And another way that scripture is read, for I know the thoughts I think toward you, yeah. says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I'm doing this in reflections on my brother and his life. I remember him trying to follow me. I remember one Sunday morning, now James Hill and I were on our way to church, and we were having a conversation, and he said to me, he said, I have many children. And he was always giving himself prophecy. And I just looked at him and laughed. And he told me how many, it was quite a bit. But he was speaking spiritually. And so we went into the church and waited to be seated. A young man walked up behind him and put his hands, a young man, walked up behind him and put his hands on his shoulder. And he said, this is my father. I said, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. James Everett has shared many scriptures with me. He has shown me how to anoint my children. He has taught many children how to tie their shoes. And this is the very best of my brother James Everett. We are very thankful unto God for giving us miracles after miracles after miracles. Yeah. The doctors have said, James Ellett paralyzed from the neck down, could not live. Could not live six months yeah. in various times. Could not live six weeks. And I have grieved all these times. They said he could not live a year. The doctors said he could not live two weeks. That was recently. Yeah. He lived to be 88 years old. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. This prognosis started in his early 30s. He ended up walking, talking, writing, and thinking, and with a sharp mind for many years. Yeah. Praise, God. Praise God. Brother James Evan, because he was ill, for 30 years. Well, he, was, he became ill in his early 30s. Help me on the spirit. But even as a child, James Hilton had a very interesting personality and a good imagination. In that he would tell stories about the birds, he would give the chickens names, and even in that, uh, one day he was outdoors playing with my mother's biddies, and he was chasing them. And my mother came out and one his guts was hanging out. And she said, James said, well, what happened to my kid? And he said, Mama, I was running. Somebody gonna help me. <laughs> <laughs> and his guts fell out. <laughs> uh, James said, even engaged in conversations with the older couple in our neighborhood when he was very young. No one they could get uh, James Everett in uh, interesting conversations. So they would encourage him by saying, do you think you will travel the world. James ever said, yes, I will travel. They said, do you think you'll go to the Mediterranean? James ever said, yes, I will go to the Mediterranean. They said, well, will you go to Spain? He said, yes, I'll go to Spain. They said, will you go to France? He said, yes, I'll go to France. They said, will you go to the Morocco? He said, yes, I'll go to the Morocco. To Morocco. They said, well, will you go to Algeria? He said, yes, I'll go to Algeria. They said, will you go to Italy? He said, yes, I'll go to Italy. James Ellis said, they asked him, well, would you go to Greece? He said, yes, I'll go to Greece. He has traveled all seven continents of the world. He's been down at the bottom of the ocean. And he can tell you some things that you don't believe. But let us remember the scripture. 
1 Corinthians 2, 16. Those of us in Christ Jesus, but we do have the mind of Christ. But who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Just want to share with you. James ever went to the Mediterranean Sea, visit all the places, then wrote my mother a letter to share with Miss Luma, the lady that he told that he would go to all these places. My mother took the letter and read it to Miss Lula, who was at that time very sick. And the letter stated, tell Miss Lula, I am in the Mediterranean, I am in the Mediterranean Sea, and I have visited all the places we talked about when I was a, when I was a child. As my mother read the letter, Miss Lula began to cry, turned over in bed, and shortly afterwards, Miss Lula passed away. Now I want to read again, and I hope somebody is following me. For I know, and this is God talking, the thoughts I have toward you. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah, yeah. says the Lord. Yeah. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Yeah. <laughs> then you will call them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. You will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me. When you search for me with all your heart, hallelujah, I will be found by you, yes. says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have uh, driven you, says the Lord. I will bring you to the place from which I caused, I will bring you from the place, help me hold those. I will bring you to the place from which I caused you to be carried away captive. Captive. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. For me, this is such a beautiful thing. I prayed before I got here. I've been praying all along, but I prayed before I got here. Because I wanted, I wanted, I'm a nosy somebody when it comes to God. I wanted to know some things. And I want to tell you, God bless me to know some things. Amen. My brother, I believe in my heart, is saved. Because I wanted God to give me a sign. And he gave it to me. You might have thought out there that I was being sad, but out there I was praising the Lord. Because that's what I asked him for. Give me a praise that my brother said. Yes. And that's what he did. And now I want to say to the man, it's already been said. You need to repent. Yes. You need to ask God to forgive you of all of your sins of commission and omission. Commission and omission. Those things that you know you did. Those things that you don't know you did. Yes. And ask him to have mercy on your soul. Ask him to baptize you in, in his precious Holy Spirit. And, and when I was a little girl, they sang the song. And don't you rest until you find it. Yeah. And you just keep on praying until you find it. Yeah. the face of the Lord until he responds back to you. Because yeah. if you stand up long enough, he will respond back to you. Yeah. Two minutes. Two minutes. One more thing. I'm going to tell you how to When I was a little girl, we used to roll in the house. Yeah, baby, I used to sing a song, doodle doodle, the house is on fire. Come and get your praise book. Hallelujah. Now if a doodle can come up out of that house, I'll let it out. Call on him. Call out the Lord. He is the highest forward of your children. Hallelujah. I dare you to call on him. I dare you. Hallelujah. Before you do it, you're the
right because they know the difference between what's right and wrong. You know how we got in this situation? It was at the fall in the garden when they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Once you understand good and evil, you become responsible for choosing between what's right and what's wrong. But it needs to be taught again. And you know, it just so happens that uh, uh, as I thought about uh, uh, Jane, I also thought about Jesus. And you know how that Christ was crucified. Uh, Resurrection Sunday was just a couple of, two or three weeks ago. And, and if you was in attendance, you should have uh, heard something or read something about how they crucified Jesus. Uh, the king of glory. Yeah. How they crucified him between uh, two things. One on the right hand and the other on the left hand. Yeah. Uh, uh, but what struck me and stuck with me was resonating about what Brother James said. And I'm saying to myself, what had these two to do with what's right and wrong? All right. uh, but let's look at Luke's account and maybe we can figure it all out. As they hung them, Luke says, and one of the malefactors he called thieves, which were hanged, railed on him, railed on Jesus, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and others. But the other answer, if you can say, Do it thou not fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we did indeed. Just receive the due reward of our deed. Yeah. But this man yeah. had done nothing yeah. amiss. Yeah. Yeah. And he said unto Jesus, turn to him, Lord, remember me yeah. when thou comest into thy kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said unto him, Thou thou say unto me, yeah. Today thou shalt be. Will be in paradise. Uh, uh, the distinctive uh, between these two, the distinctive characteristic, the, the distinctive thing that, that sticks out between these two, it, it thieves was that one knew only wrong, and the other knew the difference between right and wrong. The first saw all things as condemned. And cast doubt, faithless as to who Jesus was, doubting that he was the Christ, yeah. falsely assuming that Jesus was just somebody else, a regular thief, just yeah. like that he was. Uh, uh, but the other one feared God, yeah, understood and accepted the consequences of his deed. Yeah. He knew that the wages of sin yeah. is death, ah, and the gift of God. His eternal life yeah. through Christ Jesus. Yeah. Uh, I can't say, uh, uh, but, 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 but it seems that uh, knowing the difference between right and wrong as it's back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it can take uh, uh, mothers and fathers here today, uh, adults here today, uh, just knowing the difference between right and wrong can carry you a long way. Yeah. Uh, 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 as I forestated, uh, uh, it needs to be resurfaced. Uh, it needs to be retaught. Uh, somebody needs to take a lesson from Mother uh, uh, Georgiana Howard uh, that before you send your children out uh, into the world, they need to know the difference. Uh, they need to know the difference between right and wrong. You see, when you meet the Howard family, you know you meant you, you're dealing with a church family. And one thing that I know about all of them that I met, not met quite a few of them in Clinton, that they know the difference between right and wrong. Can I get a witness? And I'm telling you the truth. Do you know the difference between right and wrong? You got something of great value. Jesus had done no wrong. Yet he was crucified unjustly. 
He was a righteous man yeah. and lived a righteous life without sin. And the thief, the other, the second, knew that he was receiving a just reward for the life he had lived. Amen. And he understood that Jesus had done nothing amiss. And he was being put to death simply by those who would not accept the difference between right and wrong. Those who would not stand up for right and wrong. And therefore he turned to Jesus and said, When thou enter into thy kingdom, uh, remember me. Come on now. He didn't have time to get right. But praise be to God. The grace of it all is that he knew. He knew the difference between right and wrong. Right and wrong is a requirement for every living soul to know the difference. You know, it's best uh, to do what's right. Uh, but if you know right, uh, you're on the right track. Uh, the problem with the world today, uh, I think I will preach a little while, uh, is that wrong folks, uh, people in schools, uh, and people in government, uh, and people in high positions uh, act like uh, they don't know the difference uh, between right and wrong. Uh, and I believe we got some folks in here uh, that won't go uh, listen to their feelings. Uh, Shout hallelujah. 
Learn to come free right away. And then stand up. Speak up. For what's right. And do what's right. That's the word. That's the message. Amen.
They know now, God. They hold me to their hearts. The difference between right and wrong. And they made up their mind to do that which is good in the sight of the Lord. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now to him that's able to keep us and to present us faultless. Oh God, the only one that can spread his wings wide enough. Oh God, that can look far enough into the future. The only one that can keep us until that day of redemption. Oh God, is you. Into your hands, we place this family as we depart from one another. Never let your spirit depart from us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We were anxious in this morning to ask the minister first, followed by Pastor Jeff, and um, also, anyone that will be going to the fellowship hall to have dinner with the family, please get to this door as well. We will again be reviewing up front. While I'm standing on behalf of the Word of Funeral Hall, I want to take this time to thank you, family, for entrusting us with your We also hope that services have met your satisfaction in every aspect. At this time, we ask the mail force to be while we prepare for the reception. Thank <laughs> you. 